lessons learned, my adventures of the last year with 2012. Any questions? How many of you are right now in the middle of a 2012 migration? Oh, that's good. Who has never heard of 2012? Okay. So I can assume some basic knowledge because I don't have, I only have an hour. So if some topics come up, typical new features in 2012, I will have to assume that you cannot know what it is about. I will quickly maybe explain. Please raise your hand. You just say, wait a moment, I have no clue what you're talking about. What is this new feature? And then we'll, everybody should stay, can stay on board. So what is my agenda for today? Challenges, opportunities. Well, we always say that, of course. I'm um, going to start with a very striking innovation that we really applauded when we first saw that coming, the new organization of the item master. Then I'm going to talk about another big change, the whole routing, scheduling thing that has been changed dramatically. Then the new lean module, of course, very interesting. Um, then some interesting innovations in master planning, not big ones, but very nice ones. Um, I look forward to already talk about those. And then we have my final point is the whole world of parameters. And that will be my slightly commercial thing because Sikich has a nice tool to make your life easier. And you know how it goes. Sometimes you have to suffer a lot of pain before you kind of get a good idea. We have always had certain pain with multi-site implementations and parameters. So that's going to be my last topic. Well, here's the short summary of the innovations in this area of products. I always like to use the word item master. I don't think people really get away from that, but Microsoft 2012 talks products. I said, okay, that's fine, but it's the item master, right? Yes, I really like that word, especially the word master, because you know every ERP system in the world, what is the most important table in that system? The item master. That's where everything happens. If you have a problem in any module, where do you typically solve it? In the item master, probably a setting wrong. So I like that word item master, but we know Microsoft is talking products. That's okay, we can handle it. Product masters, you could call that gen generic items in more gen in English. Generic item is where you have configuration options. So it's the part number for a product master is really nothing. You have to define it with options. I'm not gonna talk about it today, just a little bit. Release products, that's what we're gonna talk about. So this is my biggest topic, and it's all in the context of multi-site. So if you're a single-site company, don't walk out immediately. Maybe interesting for you too. Because of course Microsoft wants to go up to the big companies, the Fortune 100, get SAP to fall to number two in installations. Well, that's going to be a long haul, but I like the ambition. Um, but there are still many companies that are not international multi-site, and they want to be using 2012, right? I would hope. They want to stay on 2009. So let's keep that in mind. Did Microsoft remember to still keep the smaller companies happy while they have this bigger concept of multi-site? Then we have a dimension group discussion, very short, small one. This is nothing but good news, nothing but good news, nothing but good news. So I'll just prepare you so you're not going to be shocked. My first topic is a mixed bag. I'm just be honest. I'm not a sales guy. The first topic is a good idea, but it needs to go, as often we say, to the next station. Let's go in. Well, not too quick. I have to go back to the times of 2009, not too long ago. How did we handle multi-site item masters? A terrible challenge because we are required because of the, lo the local features of an item that every company, Dynamics company, I mean, but typically in the, in the real world, a company has their own item master. But it's one design, one product, same product. They make it in France. They make it in Portland, Oregon. Same product, same bomb. Okay, how do I handle that? How do I keep it in sync? The description should be the same. The commodity code is the same. Unit of measurement, hopefully the same. How do I organize this? Big challenge, 2009. Did we have a standard answer in Dynamics? No, nope, we did not. We were on our own. What does it mean on your own? You start programming. Of course, we have programmers. Every partner has programmers. So we created a tool, and there are people in this room that know exactly what I'm talking about now. How do I manage multi-site item masters? In 2009, the concept is easy. What do we want? This thing, the item master in the engineering company, should control certain fields. We call them corporate fields, local fields. Makes sense, right? Item number, item name, of course. Me uh, worldwide, same. Unit of measurement, of course, that's not a local thing. But buyer group, 
warehouse, default warehouse, yeah, that's all local. local. So that tool that we built to, to handle this problem, um, that's really what it was about. So the challenge is we need centralized control of item matters and bombs. Engineers, of course, are not surprised. Nobody is surprised. Of course we need that. If we have one design and it's rolled out to different countries, we have maybe we have four manufacturing sites, we have distribution sites, it still has the same part number, the same description, etc. This was what we did in the previous version, 2009. We really like the terminology, a corporate field and a local field. You like that too? Or you have a different name for it? Corporate controlled. Certain things you need to centralize and control centrally. That is so true. All the talk about bottom up, bottom up and everything, there is something. In the data world, you need central control. If not, well, have fun if you don't have that. So there's a tool that controls it. And you know, there's another term I want to throw at you, an English term, replication. Well, it means copy but in a way that is organized centrally. So this item master came from PDM, PLM, let's say, from an engineering system, from Blue Star, wherever it came from. And I have a mechanism that copies items and bombs, by the way, I forget to mention the bombs. That's what we had included in 2009. To this company and this company, whoever built that stuff, maybe this company didn't get it. And then, of course, to make this item usable locally, the local fields are entered by the local users. They put in the buyer. They put in the default warehouse, etc. So that's all custom. When we were in Seattle, 2010, February, we were extremely excited because we had a presentation where I said we have now a so-called product, which is the basic definition of an item. And here's the beautiful thing that we immediately liked. It's in a centralized table. Aha, no more data sharing. No, data sharing is implicit. This product table is not in a legal entity, not in a company. Maybe just so you know, company is now in 2012 called legal entity, small thing. So I have the same, let's say two companies. We're in Oregon, in France. But this table, product is centralized. Everybody can see that same table. And then I can have a transaction, which is really a click. You probably have seen it, some of you. Release this product to Oregon, release it to France and to Germany. That's it. That mechanism makes a lot of sense to us. We already started thinking, ah, we always have to do the PDM, PLM interfaces. Aha, uh -huh. we got really excited, said yes. Now we can get PLM to talk to our central item repository, corporate item master, yes. <laughs>